So we're back already trying to get a 200 scoring whitetail in classic and I talked about it in the last video I wanted to come back and try to get a better whitetail for the recurve comp and I wanted to just kind of start with a couple of highlights just from hunting over the weekend and essentially managing to get a couple of pretty neat kills. So go figure somehow we end up finding a little non-tip again and I mean I'm just out here trying to get a better entry for the recurve comp because right now we're actually a good bit outside first place there's a lot of really good uh, entries right now and I think we're around fifth so we definitely got to do better but I want to definitely get this guy and at least get a trophy shot of him I don't think he's anything I'd actually put in the lodge but we'll kind of get to the side here and if we can just get a shot in there before he smells us and takes off but he's kind of cool looking he's almost like a high rack non tip in a way I don't know kind of interesting they don't often end up looking really like that but Decent shot, and 161, I mean, not bad. We got another one that I'm gonna have to go find here really quickly, but see if we can get a trophy shot. He's not huge, so I'm kind of rushing it. But also, I want to go see what that other deer is, so I think we'll go with that. Like I said, cool to actually find a little random non-tape while we're doing this. Okay, I did not know this guy was here, but we have a huge buck right underneath us, 180 to 205. That other little buck that took off there, like, I knew he was there, and I was watching him come in behind us. I can't even believe that just showed up underneath me. Like, I heard the footsteps, I thought it was another doe. He looks honestly really solid. I haven't seen one with a score estimate like that in a while, and 185.7, that's almost the best one I've shot since Trophy Lodge just came out. And that's got us in first place in this competition. And for what this is with, like, low light and stuff, I'm honestly pretty happy with this. I think we'll kind of just go with that but yeah I mean a 185 whitetail and what was it a 229 mule deer that's a really really solid entry so yeah ultimately we got the little non tip there and that 185 whitetail actually only got us as far as second by the end of the comp so it was still pretty cool I haven't placed in the recurve comp in a while and haven't really hunted for it that hard in a while so that was good and I think hopefully like every time that competition comes up we'll actually hunt for it now and see what we can do because I put in a lot more hours just because of the comp than I probably otherwise would have, but we are going to start at the same tree stand that we shot the 185 out of, and maybe we can have similar luck. That's not exactly what I wanted to hear, but I believe, if I remember right, that's actually what happened with the 185. I had a doe come in, and a small buck behind me, and then the big guy came in from kind of the direction we're facing, so we're going to get in the stand, and we're actually going to hunt in kind of the opposite direction of what I usually do, so... A lot of times I'll kind of start here and then just go down through this area. This time we're going to go up and around and then down through like the swamp and kind of end at the lodge just to kind of see what happens doing it that way because that's not something I tend to do. Funny enough, she's walking to like the same place as well. We can kind of shoot through the tree. That's almost exactly where I dropped the other doe. So now I really want to sit here and just make sure it's not going to be a repeat. And at least now that she's down, because she's called a couple of times, anything else in the area is more likely to respond to us. So if there's anything around, hopefully we'll hear it. I mean, at least she kind of came from the direction that I want to go in. Because maybe that means we uh, are saving something that would spook towards a potential buck later. But, I mean, that's all that has called or anything. So I think we're going to collect our two does here and kind of get moving in that direction. Because I want to try walking up through there. Like I said, I don't really go that way ever. So it'll be interesting to see like what kind of differences there are and how many deer we see and if it, like I said, is a kind of better route to go on because it might be kind of what we start doing if it turns out well, but there's our other doe. That could actually be interesting, not so much for that specific elk, but the fact that we're this quickly kind of getting into elk territory and I've actually shot them from that stand that we started at. Every now and then they'll kind of wander down that far. But like I said, just never really going this way. I wasn't really sure if that's something we could expect to see. I'm gonna scoot over a little bit, just so we don't maybe catch the end of that tree there, but yeah, I mean, that could be interesting if we decide this route's good enough to really focus on for hunting whitetail. It could be kind of fun to be running into elk kind of along the way, because a lot of whitetail territory on Red Feather Falls actually does not cross over with the Roosevelt elk, so that could be kind of nice. So again, I mean, it's not a huge buck, 85 to 105 but there's another one right here in front of us and I mean I like what I'm seeing just a little bit into this we're gonna have at least two different bucks and a bull elk 
kind of all in this one little area, so we may well be back here. We may try this route again just from what I'm seeing here in the early stages, but we'll try to get that other guy in here. At the very least, get him down and not have to worry about, like, picking up his tracks or getting calls from him later and spending time on him. Like, while we know he's there and unspooked, like, able to be called in, we might as well get him, so... Decent little double lung. That guy's very, honestly, lightweight for 123 score. 68 kilos is pretty small. I mean, if this doesn't display how little weight really means in this game for scores, I don't know what can. I mean, it's low scores, to be honest, but this guy's going to be somewhere in the area of like 15 kilos heavier than the last one. And no doubt, based on that score estimate, he's actually going to score lower. And he's got a sticker right below his brow time, which is going to drop his score a bit. But yeah, like right on 100. And he's actually, I think, a bit more than 15 kilos heavier, so... It just makes me wonder, like, if I really should just track every single whitetail buck track I get. Surely, like, the heavier ones have a higher chance, but... I've seen some really high-scoring bucks that are, like, below even 80 kilos. So, I don't know. Maybe I should. I think we better just try to get rid of this doe, because we just had another grunt kind of, like, down on the edge here. Actually, I see the buck. So, super quick. He's not huge, so... Nothing to really worry about if he would take off, but I don't think he's going to hear this. Just to kind of get her out of the way. I think he kind of knew something was up, but... I mean, I guess the important thing is here, if we're not going to get a really good one, it's just kind of good to see the numbers and like how many whitetail are up in this area, and so far it seems like it's a lot. But this was an example of like getting a track that wasn't super heavy, it was 70 to 85. And kind of followed it a bit, and luckily he grunted quickly and it didn't really require much tracking. But this is where it kind of like makes you wonder if you should track the like lower weight ones, because a lot of them are going to be these 120s, but there's those ones that are higher scoring, and you really just never know unless you do track them, but it's kind of a weird shot to get in there. Get him down as well. But like I said, we're finding a lot of whitetail. We're only 30 minutes in and we've killed, I think, five? Two were does at the beginning. Now shot three bucks, I guess six. As long as I'm counting right, so... Definitely something that I'm considering for, uh... Maybe a new whitetail route to kind of try out, because... I was spawning up at this tent that we're actually just getting towards for a little while. And I was finding deer up here too, and that's kind of why I wanted to walk in this direction, so... I'm definitely curious to see, like, what we find, like, continuing past the tent now. How does this happen? Every video now, we get charged by moose. Are you actually going to charge us? Sort of. Doing all kinds of weird zigzagging to do it, but Neckbone will bring her down just fine. We've been very lucky. We've been charged by, I think, three of them since we kind of started doing this 200 grind, and somehow we've managed to drop all of them right in front of us like that. That's a really good looking buck. He's 170 to 195, and I think he's actually a 7x7, which is pretty unfortunate. I can see a tiny little sticker there. But I mean, that might be a 180 even as a 7x7, which would be kind of unfortunate uh, if he was that big and then had potential to have two more tines. But we'll bring him in and get him. I really didn't think we'd be potentially rivaling that 185 from over the weekend, but... I think he's at least got a chance of being in that area, and if he was an 8x8, I think he'd actually be bigger. I mean, he's got a fantastic frame on him. It's unfortunate it doesn't have all the times it could. There's actually another not-too-bad buck behind him. 155 to 180 coming in? I mean, just compare, though. We can't actually see the other guy. We'll have to maybe wait. I mean, that little frame is 155 to 180. This guy who is somewhere in the reeds was up to 195 in a much bigger frame. I don't know where he actually is right now, but that's actually kind of encouraging for what he might be. He's just coming through the reeds right there. I mean, he is so much bigger. I'm really kind of bummed that he doesn't have that last time because he's got good time length and everything. I really think that could be something pretty special, but that guy's stopping out there at about 85. I think next time this guy stops, we're going to try to drop him, because I'd like to get both. And now at least we have his tracks. But yeah, let's get ready on this guy. I think we can make that shot, and really I think our only hope of getting them both is to make it as soon as we can here. I mean, he's only about 25 away. I'd like him to stop, but I don't think he's going to. 
just drop him there. And we'll have to wait a little longer than I'd like to to find out the score, because I want to get that other one. And if we can, dropping him and getting him in the same trophy shot as the big guy here would be kind of cool. So he stopped there at 27. I need him to get a little bit closer. I want to use the bow, just it's not really likely there's a lot of better bucks out here, like right in this same area, but just in case. I want to drop him silently. And especially with him falling in that direction, we can absolutely get them in the same trophy shot, so it's going to take a long time to do that. But that is going to be the plan, and let's see what we're looking at with this guy. That's one of the best looking bucks I've seen, and like I said, he's a 7x7, which really hurts him, but... 183. I mean, yeah, two more times. I think he's in that 193 area at the worst. That is slightly painful, but... I mean, I cannot complain about getting two 180s. I think in back-to-back -back days, I believe the 185 was yesterday morning, actually. I mean, all things considered, that actually looks pretty good. The fact that we can't lift this guy, like, on our own is kind of unfortunate. But I'm pretty happy with that. We're not going to taximize him. We are going to... Or we were going to spin around and get her. She kind of started going away, but... Let's see if we can just, like, put that... Kind of right in front of the back leg there and bring her down, too. And I want to see, this guy's got to be like 155 or 160. Much heavier. 97.5 kilos. I mean, 158. Not a bad buck. And a little bonus doe kill up here, too. I don't want to say this is going to be my new route just because we got those couple of good ones. But when we shot the Charging Moose, I saw two more whitetail then. A small buck that spooked off and like a really tiny one that was just bedded. Those two were here that we just got. I really think we might start using this. And we have a long distance to go yet. What is this hunt right now? This guy is 175 to 200. I think that might be the buck. No, that's not the buck that I was tracking. There's another one over there. Let's see if we can get him coming in. I had a 70 to 90 kilo track, and I started to follow that. This guy grunted, and he's an 8x8. If he had the frame of the 183, he'd be 190, but I think he's kind of like low 180-ish area as well. I mean, unless I'm crazy, he looks like a smaller frame. His time length looks very solid. And we're going to have to be kind of quick because... I'd say he was kind of likely to see us there. Now, here's the thing. This guy grunted over here and... Kind of getting out of his render by going to claim that one might not be good. So we'll kind of sneak off in this direction and maybe see if we can get eyes on this guy at least. And I mean, he's pretty average, 110 to 135, but another buck just sounded off, like, on the piece of land that we're on down to our left. So, I don't know what's going on in this area, but there are just a ton of bucks, and it's probably all just, like, a coincidence, like, that we went around the other way and all these bucks kind of ended up in the same area. But I wonder if that's something they sort of just do, if that's, like, a normal thing to happen, if you sort of, I guess, just wait, in a way and then come over here, say, an hour into the hunt if they start to kind of congregate here. I wouldn't think that's something they consistently do because animals in Classic kind of just wander. So there wasn't really any sign of that other buck coming in, and I kind of wonder if he's just bedded down, but I came back here to grab this guy, and I could kind of believe he's bigger than I thought now, so I'm not really sure what's going on. We almost messed that up. I thought it was a bit far back. 184.5, so, I mean, it is actually bigger than the other one we shot by just a little bit, but that's the thing. This guy has a full frame, and he's 184. That other guy didn't, and was 183. I gotta think you're looking at roughly 10 inches from, like, these last two tines here. So we really could've had a good one, um, had he been an 8x8, and we had this issue before, not really an issue, but this same kind of thing where we had a, a really good frame with not enough points, and then a less good frame with all the points. They just weren't quite this big. And I was really just sitting here, like, while I was setting this trophy shot up, trying to think. I'm not sure I've ever shot two 180 whitetail in the same hunt. Maybe it has nothing to do with this route, but I gotta at least try this a few more times after the result it's given us so far. But I've got the marker down here where I think that other buck run it from. I'll at least look for tracks and see, because I'm pretty sure I'm still on his trail, actually. And, of course, why would he not be 85 to 100? I just had a feeling walking over here, that's what I would see. I mean, 14 to 21 minutes. 
I'm really not sure what the deal was, unless he did bed down and then, like, woke back up, because by the time we walked back there and claimed our buck and then got the trophy shot and everything, he would have been within render in that 14 to 21, so I'm not really sure where he even got to. I mean, that looks like a good buck there. I'm not 100% sure that that's the one we're tracking. The weight matches, he's 155 to 180, and I think really the reason he's any lower than the others is because he's got, like, shorter tines. Because his frame's actually not too bad, but I'm assuming that's the one we're after. We might actually have to take a little bit of a riskier shot than I want to, because this doe's sneaking up behind us. And while he's kind of in that grunt animation, maybe we can get drawn back and get a 30 meter shot off? I'm surprised he doesn't even see us. Just spotted us there, and that hit lower than I wanted, but couldn't quite get it centered on the chest where I wanted to. The traits are still really cool in this game, but... I'm hoping that's a lung. If it is, he's going to be down relatively quickly. But the direction that he took is going to make it a little bit difficult to really find out if it's lung blood. Because he kind of just stayed in the water for a long time. I would say it was, because he went down pretty quickly. And, I mean, like I said, he's probably in that 170 area. Right lung. And actually only 158. I think he's an 8x8, so... Hey, it might be a 7x7. Seven seven. That might be one of the reasons, but... Yeah, just kind of short times keeping him from being super special. But we're almost over to where I wanted to end at. We may be able to manage one more buck if we're lucky. But as many as were in that last area, I wouldn't be too surprised if the ones that kind of hang out where we're headed were sort of up where we just came from. I think that last buck probably is going to be it. We're getting pretty much to where I was planning on wrapping up this video, but... We literally just hit the two hour mark. For a two hour hunt to get four bucks over 150 and two of those to be over 180 is crazy. I really, like, I can't remember a better whitetail hunt that I've ever had. That was just insane. And a lot of it was just in that one small area. We had like the two in the same trophy shot and it wasn't far until we ran into the next 180. So I hope we can have this kind of luck in the future, like taking that route. That's definitely something I'm gonna try some uh, here in the next couple of weeks and see if that does continue to produce good sized bucks but I mean yeah as far as how it went today best hunt we've had definitely since we started looking for 200 and maybe the best whitetail hunt I've ever had so definitely can't complain about uh, the lack of tines and stuff on some of those but anyway that is going to do it for this video so thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time